solihullradio.com. Welcome back as we roll into another Solihull podcast. My name is Claire Bullivant from the Solihull Observer. And on this podcast, we're going to chat through some of Solihull's top news stories this week and also the top things to see and do in town. Sadly, we're missing, missing Mr... Sadly, we're missing Mr. Solihull himself. It ain't a party unless it's an Ian Rogers party. That's Mr. Ian Rogers. But it's still the Solihull dream team with the wonderful Mel Palmer, chief executive of Solihull Bid here. Hello, Mel. Hello. And we've also got Mr. Amazing mover and shaker, Jeff O'Brien, who runs Solihull Radio. Hello, everyone. So let's start about front page news story this week, I think. Mm -hmm. This is a story, a really sad story, actually. And it's... um, Somebody basically has stolen some of the sensory equipment from a Solihull Learning Disability charity just as they were putting together their new garden touches. Um, isn't this awful? Who steals from children and also disabilities? It's, yeah, completely not right. I agree with you. And Solar are a wonderful charity um, based just down by the fire station as well, as aren't they? So they've yeah. got two different campuses um, and they do some fantastic work. Great kids clubs. So why would you do it? It's just awful. Um, what, what's the therapeutic rain wall that was stolen, though? Have you ever seen one of those? It sounds quite cool, doesn't it? It does sound quite cool. Mm. I'm thinking back to the sort of Chelsea Flower Garden style yes, uh, yeah. installations that I've seen yeah. with uh, the water just cascading down. Maybe, uh, again, without Googling it, Claire, yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm in the uh, dark. But I just, uh, I just, it's a horrible story. And obviously it made the front page. So it's Solely Hall mm. Life Opportunities Solo. That's mm. what it's called. And you obviously know this company, Jeff. Yeah, I do. Yep. Yeah. Um, there's, there's a couple of people there that um, I've worked with in the past. And they're a lovely bunch of people. And it must be really, really sad to get almost to the finishing line with a new space. And then to have people come in and... I know. And, and what things. are they going to do with it? That's what I always think. When people destroy, mm. you know, an area or steal parts of things, exactly what, what's the benefit from that? Yeah. Um, that's what worries me even more. Well, it's apparently gaining quite a lot of publicity. So hopefully somebody somewhere will know something. And who knows, the items may be returned. But it's not all doom and gloom. Because no. we did have one good story that we talked about last week. And it was the uh, mother of six children. She's disabled. And she had her scooter burnt to a cinder um, a couple of weeks ago in Solihull. But we, in the office of the Solihull Observer, we actually had a phone call. And somebody has donated her. They want to remain anonymous. Isn't that amazing? That They've don- yeah. donated her a whole new scooter. It's so brilliant. A mobility scooter, That's not right. just a one of those scooters <laughs> from the park. <laughs> no, a mobility yeah. scooter, sure. So, um, That's such a good story. For every bad person, there's also a really good. That's person. really nice of them as well, and yeah. they just phoned into the into the paper. I didn't take the call, but apparently yes, and they don't want anyone to know who they are. Oh, it's all totally stuff. anonymous. But I just think it's amazing when people do that because so many people do do good stuff, but they put yeah. it on their Facebook page, don't yeah. they? They put it. On, I know yeah. I do, <laughs> yeah. but you know there are people who just don't want any recognition, and they just That's do it. True. Oh, being yeah, good and sure. being nice. So very nice story there. That's a feel-good story. Isn't Absolutely. It? And you can actually also, if you're listening to this, you can also do something really good. Um, basically, it's Age UK Soli Hall. They're after people. They're calling it the Cog, Jog or Be a Mad Dog Challenge. So they <laughs> You want... did well there. <laughs> I that, did. That was excellent. <laughs> Luckily, I wrote that bit <laughs> yeah, down. Yeah. They want people to take part in either a 55-mile bike ride, a jog... The jog part is going to be to complete in the Birmingham Half Marathon in October, or the Be a Mad Dog part is to do a tandem parachute jump in, at Hindon Airfield. And it's all for raising funds for mm-hmm. HUK Solly Hall. So if you guys wow. had to choose, which one would you do? The jog, cog, or the Be a Mad Dog? Definitely jog. I'd do the jog Safest. as well. Yeah. Safest. 13 and a bit miles. Although it might be a jog and sort of shuffle. Yeah. <laughs> and a wander. Yeah, and a wander at the end. <laughs> No, I think um, I think that's really the, the lady um, from HUK in Solihull, lady called Lorraine Hart. She's been into the studio a couple of times, and some of the things that she comes up with and develops as the fundraising manager um, over there, it's really really good. Yeah. All the money she was telling me that HUK raise in Solihull stays in the borough of Solihull. Brilliant. Yeah, so which is great. it. it Everything comes back to the people around here. So it, it really is important. I don't think I'd go tandem skydive. Oh, no. I was just thinking that might be the quickest and most, like, you get it over and done with quickly, though, wouldn't you? <laughs> no. I wouldn't be able I to do that. I think that would stay no. with me for the rest of my yeah. life. Uh, I'm, I'm out. <laughs> I'd like to say I'd be brave enough, but I don't know. Maybe maybe we should all sign up and do one of them. <laughs> I'm in training. See. You forget I'm we, in training for, the, for, um, for Louise over at Get Ahead. What are you doing? I'm doing the wolf run. 
Okay. Oh, are you? On, uh, on the 9th, 8th or 9th of September. So how Ooh. far is the wolf run? I think it's about 10k, but it's not about the running. It's the open water swimming. It's the... Isn't this uh, the really muddy one? The really muddy one, yeah. And why is it called wolf run? Because you, uh, you run in a pack and it's, oh. and it's like... Rrr. <laughs> <laughs> You're wolf face. Yeah, it's a wolf face. Rrr. You're looking very macho there. So, uh, yeah, I'm in training for that and I'm yeah. going to raise a little bit of money with my pack for uh, Get Ahead over on the Warwick Road. And Louise is the fundraising manager there. She deals with Hashtag Charity Tuesday. So if you're interested, any charities out there that are listening, if you want to get your stories out here, why don't you come along to Hashtag Charity Tuesday? And we celebrate charity champions in our area. Brilliant. I saw you jogging back from McDonald's. Is that part of your training? I'm almost (laughs) at my... (laughs) With your big Mac in your hands. (laughs) I'm almost at my zenith now. (laughs) You know, if I, you know, if I get... They're too early. I've, I've still got the rest of August to get through, but I'll get there. It's 10K. <laughs> Once you get How going. How many miles? I always do everything in miles. I never know, K. 6.3. Okay, it's still quite a bit, yeah. Ooh, no. So, I, um, pref- I prefer if you're actually being chased by wolves. The wolves. That's what, yeah. I, was, that's what yeah. I was thinking. Do they let wolves out at you? Mm-hmm. You know, like zombie, the zombie run and zombies come and chase it's you. It's really good fun. And, uh, <laughs> you know, mm. you should have a go. You, I, I love stuff oh, like all that. Of us. I did um, Tough Mudder. A couple yeah, of years same ago, sort of thing. And I loved it. I absolutely hated like the idea of it and the run up to it. And I didn't do any training really. Okay. And I was going to pull out because two of the, my team pulled out on like the morning of the run, and I was like, oh, I was so tempted. And I remember ringing someone, my p- mum or something, and saying, oh, I really don't want to do it. She was like, if you've said to do it, you're going to do it. You have to do it. So I was yeah. like, oh, God. And I went along, and my friend and I still did it. And honestly, it's one of the best things I've ever done. Yeah. I'm mm. so happy Great we did stuff. it. Great mm. stuff. And raising money again for our local area. Yeah, absolutely. HUK. Yeah. Brilliant. We're very good, good at this. Good luck, we? Lorraine, <laughs> if you're listening in. Absolutely. I, I hope lots of people sign up for your uh, charity programme. Another good thing that may be coming to town is they're talking about having all these saving, and I'm, I don't want to say the word, I'm going to say defibs. Yeah. Defibrillators. Well done. That's the one I wanted. <laughs> but they're saying that eventually they want one defibrillator. Well done. Um, <laughs> for every 300 metres of urban space in yeah. parts of Silly Hill. Yeah. This is a good idea, isn't it, guys? Yeah, it is. And I think we, we've been supporting this already because we've got our town hosts who are first aid trained to a sort of higher level. But with the defibs, it, it can mean that you do have to have people that are feel confident to use them. So it does come with its um, extra training sometimes, but I think just having it there is obviously going to be a brilliant thing. If it's there in the right place at the right time and saves a life, this is what we need. So the, the defib is the thing that does the pumping of the heart? The if... defib is actually, uh, well, I've, I thought it was the thing that sort of shocked you when shocked you were having you. a heart, oh, okay. heart attack. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. Which, which people do normally, but the staying alive pumping before the ambulance gets there. Almost. Is that what yeah. happens? Yeah. yeah. Um, from, this... from my training... Um, the AED, it, you, you put the pads on and it works out if the person needs to be shocked. Oh, wow. And it will tell you what to do. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, from our first aid training, as soon as you call the ambulance you, and you start CPR if they're not breathing and whatnot. Um, and if you've got one of these devices, yeah. you are, the, the, I don't know quite what the statistic is. I think it's um, in the article. It's but, pretty uh, high, I was it, it, you know, if you've got one of these, if you just do CPR, mm. um, out of every hundred people you just perform CPR on, mm. three survive. Oh my goodness! Mm. Right, not, not we, very good. Statistics. Not, it's not a very good statistic. You could be there trying your real hardest, mm. uh, but only three of them will uh, will start again. But at least with this, you've got much more. Much more chance. Yeah, and you yeah. put the pads where it tells you to put the pads, and then it talks to you, um, and it, it it scans, and then it works out what to do. And then it will either shock the patient or not shock the patient because some people don't need a shock. So have we already got some in the town centre? Yeah, there are two that I know of. And I know that there's an initiative at the moment um, going on through the council. Um, there's discussions there about getting them in. I think it's just businesses that may or may want or not want to mm. have them in their businesses. So I think there's lots of discussion. It's definitely the profile of it is raised really high at the moment. and Hopefully we can all benefit from that. And is it kind of like... How how do you find them? So if you are on the high street and somebody, how do you see them? Are they kind of are they? They're bright yellow. Oh, okay, they are yeah, they're yellow. bright yellow in sort of like a see through um, case on the wall, hmm. so that they're quite easy to see. And also, if you've called triple nine, um, mm-hmm. they will tell you the location of your nearest oh, AED device. Yeah. Oh, it sounds like a great idea to me. Yep. Yes, yeah. yeah. What is it? A thousand pounds? 
Is that the initial cost? I yeah. think it's not, it's not very much, is it? No, compared to a life, at least, yeah. anyway. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, brilliant. If, if we stuff. get one every 300 metres in the urban parts of Silicon, yep. only going to be good news. Yep. That's it, yeah. Um, another new technological thing, um, <laughs> solar-powered bins going on trial <laughs> oh. in Silicon. Is this a good idea, or is this a whole in, load of rubbish? In pre-production today, it... Oh. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. <laughs> Oh, I, I knew I'd get that in before you did. I well knew done, you. Said. Well done. It in, sort of floated out, didn't it, over his head? And, and, the way and I see it. In, in pre-production today, we talked about this. Now, this is not the bin that Mel is. You're suggesting that has a chat with that you and, chat, and thanks you nice, for yeah. um, for all of that. But from our research, it just emails or texts the council <laughs> to tell them that the bin needs emptying. Is that correct? That's what I've I've Apparently. thought it said, but I can't. I, I don't really. I suppose it's okay for bins that aren't in a town centre. I'm always looking at things from a town centre focus, sadly. Yeah. So I know that in the town centre, the bins are emptied anyway. So mm. they wouldn't need to be told. But these, but I think, they these are, are out in the, in the out in the park so, and okay. stuff like that. And apparently so. they're huge. They take like eleven times the amount of yeah. normal rubbish. So okay. I think they can stay unemptied for yeah. quite a lot yeah. longer. Yeah. Um, and s- smell slightly worse. Probably, yeah. That's yeah. true. Didn't think of that. Yeah. Mm. Um, but Mel, I want to know where you have been to have a bin talk to you. Oh, I've been to a theme park. <laughs> I went to a theme park and the bin talked to me. What so did it yeah, say? it just said, "Oh, thank you." Well, that's, <laughs> I think it said. <laughs> Oh, thank you for being so tidy. <laughs> was this America? Or? Oh, it could have been. <laughs> that was a good American accent. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll try. Um, wow. I think I, it was I a want... Drayton Manor. I think it was a shark. I want a bin that talks to me. Yeah. Um, I've just got one of those new electronic bins. Every time you walk past it at home, it opens up. And I thought that'd be really clever. But it's driving me insane. Because oh, no. it never opens up when I wanted it to no. open. As soon as I'm walking past, it just opens and oh. scares me to death. So oh, no. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit <laughs> unsure about these technological no. advances. Lead weight bin. on the top. Yeah. Here we go. There are four new bins in Malvern Park, oh. five bins in Shirley Park, and two bins on the town centre's high street. Really? Yeah. That are talking? No, that are um, the, 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 the solar powered. Well, I, I, I knew did. I'd seen one in the high street on, on Wandering Round. When I'm walking back through it this afternoon, and I'm the going sensor, to. Does it have a lid? It does have it. Well, the lid is a dome. Um, presumably the solar power bit. Wow. Um, and then, yeah, it, it, um, I'm just reading Councillor Ken Hawkins. Thanks, Ken. Um, for, uh, Ken's a friend of the show. So he's, uh, he's in there. The increased capacity can help keep our open spaces clean, whilst the tech inside can help save the council money because the council operatives are planning their routes to get to every bin more, you know, strategically. Mm. Wow. Oh, hmm, <laughs> <laughs> says Mel. <laughs> it's just amazing that something's gone on on the high street, that Mel hasn't, it hasn't, been, hasn't come from you. Yeah. Normally Did you not have one. a meeting about these no, bins? I, no, no, they've <laughs> snuck in like, yeah, like little robots. So I have no clue about why this is happening on the high street. So there we are. We will, mm. we will find mm. out. This could I think Parks is, is, is useful and mm. out in, in the borough, I think, is useful. But sure. the high street, the bins are cleaned every day. So... Who knows? Yeah, it's a weird one, isn't it? Talking, yeah. talking of parks, they're thinking of turning the area between Coventry and Solihull, Hall, you know, all those beautiful fields, into a national park. What do we think of that? I think that's a huge yes. This is page yes. seven of we this have week's to do paper. This. Yeah. And it's the Meriden Gap and other green areas designated in a national park has been welcomed by a government report, apparently. Yeah, and I think it, anything to do with um, green spaces getting people to appreciate their green spaces and actually getting people out away from all their technological products, their their talking bins or moving bins or whatever, uh, and getting them out into the fresh air, even as little as five minutes outside can reduce your stress. Um, And also they did a study with students recently and they realised that the ones that went out into parks nearby, they had really great lower levels of of uh, corto... Is it corto...? cortosal uh, and then also raised levels of um, vitamin d so it's really really helping people with stress and anxiety if they get out into the green open spaces and i like it when they label these areas of green space as a national park or something because it often gives them protection doesn't yes, it it's yeah. like nothing can be built on yeah, it and yeah, yeah it's, it's some sort of protection that's it yeah and you can develop that area you're as shaking well. your head there i'm Jeff. not sure about that but if they how can they make is that out near bicken hill or out 
f- further between uh, Meriden and the Covent, or along the Coventry Road sort of thing. The picture says it's um, near Bicknell, but mm. I'm not sure. I'm not really au fait with this whole area around there. So mm. um, I think it's the Meriden Gap, so which would include like the green areas like Blythe. Uh, Blythe River, River Valley. Yep. But I just think anything, I do think it's a good idea. Anything that's going to keep our green spaces alive, that's what I, I really care I on. think it's a great idea. I don't think they're going to stop the build because really? we need thousands of new houses. And um, mm. it'll, it'll, I know it's terrible to say. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm with Mel on this one. Five minutes outside, lower your cortisol, mm. get some vitamin D, and um, breathe air. Yeah. Get off your devices. Get off your devices. Play with a ball. Yeah, exactly. And of course, we are now a tourist destination because we've been having people coming here on holiday. We've just heard about all these um, children, are they, from yeah. Chernobyl yeah. who've been visiting oh, us. Yes, yeah. Tell us about that. Do you guys know anything well, about Well, I, I know that every year some uh, some children from that area come down. I think they're sort of 12, 13, 14-year-olds. Oh, does it happen every year? I think so. Um, and then what they do is they come and enjoy a break from their area of um where is it now where is uh belarus belarus what sort of way isn't it chernobyl now um and there's been lots of things happening did you see that series on on tv i did i didn't it's amazing i've heard it's horrific uh, well i you know mrs uh solihull radio watched you know back to back pretty much as soon as you start that's it it's absolutely gripping Mm. it's really gripping and you can watch it on catch-up still Mm -hmm. can't you Mm -hmm. And it's won all, most awards that a TV series has won, I think. Really, really good. And what's yeah. it actually called? Chernobyl? Chernobyl, yeah. 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 Okay, They're yeah. up all night, think of the name. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. They, Nailed they, it. They, yeah. That's exactly let's, what it's Yeah, let's just it. go with Chernobyl. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, how many years is that now? 30, 40 years ago? Yeah, it must 30 be. years ago? Yeah. And, and you, right, it's still a no-go zone. It's going to be a no-go zone right. for a long, long time. Um, from somewhere in my mind, I remember reading a story um, that in that area, they're now beginning to produce vodka. I don't know if I'd be willing to try that. No, I wouldn't. You'd be thinking it's radioactive no. or yeah. something, wouldn't you? But I, I can't believe people go on holiday there. And since the Chernobyl um, series went out, the chartered sort of holidays there have gone absolutely, you know, wow. off the scale. People go there to have a look at it. Is it true that it will be forever, forever. polluted? Yeah. Like, yeah. Are they still sending in? I, I remember, you know, 10, 15 years ago, they were still sending people in in the suits yeah. and yeah. paying yeah. them a fortune to try and move certain things back out or That's clean right. it. Yeah. Are they still doing that or have they just given up? No, I think they are still trying to do things, but um, the one area is completely sealed, isn't it? That's right, under some sort of dome. But it Mm -hmm. still is giving off the the bad stuff. It's terrifying, isn't it? And that, that image in your mind of the Ferris wheel... Do you remember the Ferris wheel image with, with all the um, overgrown plants growing yeah. over it? Because, yeah. you know, no one's been in that fairground for 30 years. Yeah, and, wow. and everything was just left, left because people were evacuated. So you can see the sort of macabre fashion, mm. fascination to go and see it. Mm. But, um, oh, no. And there are still animals and things there, yeah. aren't there? Yeah. And they'll have yeah. fish yeah. with three heads. And... Well, no, that, that's, the, that's the flip side, isn't it? The fauna yes, is become... actually doing really, really well yeah. because there's no human involvement. No. Wow. So the the actual environment, and all right, it's radioactive. So we can, you know, it's not great mm. for everything, but mm. it's doing really well. All of the the sort of ecosystems yeah. are really thriving. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. But it's yeah, it's a strange one, isn't it? Very strange. Um, moving on, this is something that you've been working on, Mel, considerably over the last few months, and it's all happening this month. How's it all going, the postcards from Soli Hall? Oh, it's been fantastic, thank you. It's been really, really good. Um, and we produced a few little postcards um, that people could buy, um, which we were raising some fun- funds for Change Into Action charity. And we thought, well, maybe, you know, we'll sell just a handful. It didn't cost us very much to produce. But today, when we have the bid gazebo out, we've had people coming and queuing to buy the whole series yes. of the postcards. And then a lady came up today and said, oh, I'm making a book Aww. and I'm sticking them all into a book. She said, I'm, this is one of the best things you've ever done. So I just think it's really opened people's eyes to the history of um, Surly Hall Town Centre. And it's a good reminder, isn't it, of where we've come from. And Who comes up with these ideas? Are they yours? Uh, oh, no, I couldn't claim this. This is a wonderful lady at the library, Tracy, who we met with. Um, we thought she was just going to be asking us to help um, produce a, a map. And then when she showed us all the um, 
all the memorabilia that she had and all the data and all the photographs. We said, this has to go out there to the public. The public needs to see this. So it, she's really the catalyst of the whole thing. And then the bid of picked it up um, and thought this was a great idea so we've the team have worked really hard on it so yeah it's great and it's all running until the end of the month it is yeah yeah so you can go and sit on the sofa in Touchwood pick up the phone listen to people talking about how they used to ride a horse into Woolworths um, and things like that the wild west I know (laughs) I know Um, and McDonald's where it used to have a post box the height of a saddle so you didn't have to get off your horse to post your mail. Wow. Yeah. So it's fascinating and, and the trail's Sorry, still McDonald's. going. McDonald's. Yeah. In the location of McDonald's. In the lo- location of McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's has been around for a long time. <laughs> long time. 1920s McDonald's. I'm just going to leave the yeah, horse. Yeah, yeah. The um, yellow arches yeah. they used to ride under. <laughs> you know, um, in the top end of Touchwood, there's two sort of five metre prints yeah, either yeah. side of there. What, yeah. Where Are they just um, montage photographs of the high street? It's Somebody was commissioned, I believe, it was in uh, 1948, and mm. somebody was commissioned to do a panoramic uh, view of the high street. Mm-hmm. And so Touchwood, um, have, have recreated that so it's either side and then they've added a few of the quotes that people have talked about um, from the past so it looks really good so if you, good. yeah go into touch with and have a look at that um, yeah it look, does look really fascinating I've, um, I've taken a photo of the uh, image and um, Solihull Radio's front door is still there in the image oh fantastic is it yeah it is oh, yeah wow. I'll show you the photograph yeah have, um, you, have you never been tempted to do a drone thing along the high street because um, I know you we, did that amazing we, video we did at, um, uh, over Christmas down uh, Crescent Arcade um, the drone company that I use guys um, guys called Impact Aerial absolutely fantastic um, he is uh, licensed, actually, uh, from the airport to fly in this area. So oh, maybe, maybe over Christmas time, we could get. Uh, mm, what, what is the? Just really quickly, it's not a Christmas market, is it? it no, it's the festive feast. Festive feast. That's right. I, I almost call it Jingle Bell Jog. Festive feast. Are we talking about Christmas <laughs> Sorry. already? Sorry. I think it's nineteen weeks. Well, what a lovely roundup mm. this week we've done. I mean, obviously we can't fit in all the stories that are in the paper this week, but um, we've done a fair few. And if you have a story for us, do get in touch with us at the Soli Hall Observer, also Soli Hall Radio, and also the Bid Team, because you're all in the thick of it, aren't we, guys? That's We're it. here. Yep. We're yep. here Absolutely. for you, and we want to spread the news and help make lives here in Soli Hall better and more pleasant for us all. So yeah, do get in touch with us and keep listening to this podcast. We'll be back after the break with what's on to do this week in town first fields is one of the region's most respected law firms with more than 120 years experience Winners of the Chamber of Commerce Excellence in Professional Services Award and High Growth Business of the Year Award. We have over 150 experts working across eight regional offices, all dedicated to finding you real solutions. Get to know us better at firstfields.co.uk. You're listening to Sonic Hall Radio. That's right. Welcome back. Thank you very much for staying with us here on the What's On Solihull and, in fact, the Solihull podcast. I'm joined in the studio by the same people that were just here a minute ago, and that is Claire and Mel. Claire's from the Solihull Observer. (laughs) We're still here. We're still here, and Mel is uh, the CEO of uh, the Solihull Bid. Um, Right, we are starting on Friday the 16th of August. Now, this absolutely says Ian Rogers to me. Um, this looks like one of his events. If it ain't a party unless it's, it's an, an Ian Rogers party. party. <laughs> um, it's a glow UV neon party over at Pop World um, in Solihull. Now, that starts at 8 p.m. and that goes right on until 4 o'clock uh, sa- uh, fr- Saturday morning. Who Is does this that? when your teeth glow? Is it when yeah, your yeah. teeth look really white? It, and, yeah, black and, lights. And I think mm. they put give you glow stuff you can put on your face and yeah (laughs) stuff like that so it sounds fun if you want some more information uh on have a look at popworldparty.co.uk and uh, you may even see ian rogers himself because i know he's there on a friday (laughs) evening yeah absolutely moving on to saturday the 17th of august we've got a fine and local food fair again this is happening on the high street Mm -hmm. and mill lane in silly hold 9 a.m until 5 30 p.m you can sample the best of locally sourced food and produce from the range of top quality 
suppliers. I love these because it's all local. It's supporting our local economy and our local farmers and things. So yeah, do exactly. try and get along and support them. If you want more details or find out who's exhibiting this week, go to sketz.co.uk for all the details on that. And then sticking with um, Saturday the 17th, there's also a Caribbean evening, which sounds a lot of fun, at the Royal Mm. British Legion in Knoll. Tropical sounds of the Caribbean with the UK's number one steel pan player. Yeah, man. Yeah. Love it. (laughs) The booker at um, the the British Legion is a guy called Ken. He gets some really good people in. He yeah. does, and yeah. they, they're really, um, you sometimes think British legions are a bit mm-hmm. sort of old school, don't you? A lot right. of yeah. elderly people, but these guys, they seem to put on events for everyone, yeah. the whole family, yeah. and they've uh, got some amazing I, nights there. I've been there, round of drinks, with peanuts, under a fiver. <laughs> Do you know what, one of my first ever jobs was at the British Legion on the Shirley Road, yeah. on the, that road there, and I remember... Um, Somebody said, oh, I want a drink for you. And I thought, oh, a glass of wine kind of thing, a tip. And he was like, no, 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 you're only allowed to take 15p. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I know. I know. And I was like, really? <laughs> but um, it's very, very cheap. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is. Great right. night out. Sunday, the 18th of August, Meadow Management in Knoll. If you'd like to join the conservation volunteers and help manage the meadows at uh, Jobs Close Local Nature Reserve in Knoll, um, why don't you get in touch with them? For more information, visit solihullcv.org.uk. Yeah, I love those events. It's really mm. nice to go and meet fellow people who mm. like helping the environment and keeping exactly. things. Yeah. So I've met some great people at events like that. Okay. Then moving on to Monday, the 19th of August. It's a nature family day at the Parkridge Centre in Bruton Park. B91 3HW is the postcode for your sat nav. 10.30am until 12pm or 1.30 till 3pm. This is a drop-in session for you and your babies and toddlers. And you can, it's basically your messy and sensory play. That's what they say. Mm -hmm. Um, These guys put on great events and it's all part of the Warwickshire Wildlife Trust. So you can find out all the details on their website, warwickshirewildlifetrust.org.uk forward slash events. There is a slight entrance cost per child on that event, Claire, of £3.50 each. Well worth it, I think. Absolutely. Say. And also, at the same place, at the Parkridge Centre, the next day, on the Tuesday the 20th, you can do Mud Glorious Mud, which sounds even more fun, if you ask me. Mm. Mind you, I have got a grandson who does get drawn to a lot of birds, so there we go. You don't um, have a grandson. No, a grandson. I you do. look about 25, Mel. No. Oh, oh I'm, how, comi- I'm coming here how again. How do you have a grandson? <laughs> Hello, Come Mason. <laughs> anyway, so he's my prince. And um, there we go. And so you can go along 10.30 to 11.30 at Bruton Park, Parkridge Centre, and make mud monsters and paint. Oh, I love this. Uh, for children, two plus. Entrance costs £3.50. And again, it's going to the inquiries at wkwt.org.uk. Kids in Space on Wednesday, the 21st of August at Alton Jubilee Park, B92 7QR, 11 until 3, meet some dancing stormtroopers and enjoy a space-themed craft activity. That sounds great as well. Um, Other entertainment includes Claire's favourite, which is a Punch and Judy show. (laughs) I'm scared of Punch and Judy. I think it's really scary. Um, It's it's like you get eaten by crocodiles, you get banged over the head with sausages and hammers and... I think they're terrifying. really scary. I terrifying. was always that kid who yeah. was sent into the parents' room to wait for the pet <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. to be over. I'm, with, I'm with you on that one. Um, there are some children's rides, face painting and lots, lots more. So that is Wednesday the 21st of August at Alton Jubilee Park. And then we'll finish off the week with traditional Indian block printing. Who knows what this is? I don't even know I what don't it know. is. I don't know. fun. But it's all happening at the core. You can join Helen from Mindful Crafts for a block craft workshop 10 30 a.m and you can find out all the details on that at the core theater solihull.co.uk brilliant stuff thank you so much for listening because that now rounds up our what's on for this particular week there is one more bit that we'd need to uh, have a quick chat about and uh, mel is going to tell us a little bit about that I was just sneaking in. I'm being a bit naughty, but I want, I'm so excited about something we've booked. So um, Saturday the 13th of September. Gosh, I hope I've got the date right. Yes, I have. Um, we're bringing in, we're bringing Covent Garden to Mel Square. Wow. So we're bringing the Covent Garden uh, Circus Bus to Mel Square. And it's there all day, 10 till 5. And throughout the day in Mel Square, you will see high wire acts. You will see all sorts of things that are really fantastic. But also, you won't just need to be in Mel Square. It's roaming. So they have a little uh, performance at the front. And whilst they're not performing on the front, the rest of the acts are, are actually 
roaming the town centre, going through Touchwood and things like this. It's completely fascinating. We've seen the trailer for it and it's coming to us. So it's brilliant. It's all free to and see. And that's and 13th of September. What yeah. day of the week is that? Saturday. 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 For Saturday's oh my time. So it'll be like yeah. jugglers and. Yeah, everything. Uh, oh my Comedians. Um, it's just, just amazing. There is a high wire act which looks really scary, but yeah, it's great. Brilliant. You, you put on some amazing yeah. events now. <laughs> really, really good. <laughs> really <laughs> Uh, great stuff. Uh, thanks for joining us and listening in to the Solihull podcast. If you have an event or you'd like to become part of this podcast as a guest, you are more than welcome. Get in touch with Claire at the Solihull Observer. Um, see you again soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.